call the meeting to order and uh, ask for approval of the minutes from uh, October 27th. Move it. Moved by Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Simpson. All in favor? I'm not on budget. No. I used to be. I guess I you're on the regional planning board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Dennis, you're on the regional planning board. 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 Okay, moved going by home. Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Dickinson. Yeah. <laughs> Any, get my All name in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the first item is a uh, discussion of the 2017 financials, and I'm taking some of this off from uh, the Treasurer's report that, I, that <coughs> you should have all seen. Treasurer's office calculates that our fund balance for the end of uh, 2017 is nineteen million four hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars, which is about a million and a half over what it was uh, for 2016. Uh, the part of that is uh, the five hundred thousand from Siemens, and uh, the other part is basically sales tax. Uh, a little bit of that. Right. Well, they, yeah, right. But the additional over last year is part yes. of basically those two things. I think every year our departments turn back, you know, anywhere from a million to a million and a half. So that's been pretty consistent since I've been doing this. So I guess that's where we start. Our uh, our policy calls for uh, ten million to sixteen million. So, but we are using uh, approximately 1.6, uh, almost 1.7 of uh, general fund balance to make the budget for this year work. So, uh, and that's uh, about uh, 1.3 million, a little less for uh, the general fund itself, and uh, debt service is uh, 425,000. Plus 203. <laughs> so. it, it would seem a consistent 2% uh, uh, increase in sales tax revenue to the county is a uh, is a very healthy huge number. It, it just did. Uh, I, I think our I think it's almost a predictable number. I would think if you take a 2% inflation rate and you, you kind of look at kind of our retail base within the county it would seem as if uh, that number would uh, you know we always can't count on things but it would seem to be a consistent thing that uh, sh should be consistent so. Supervisor Beatty. Um, yes it, it, it does contribute to one bad thing and it could you know, upset the apple cart like if we had problems in Lake George at the actual lake you know, that could put a huge dent in tourism, yeah. and we all rely so much on that tourism dollar. So it, that's that's a big no. And, and you make an excellent observation, Doug. And uh, and and the uh, the health of the lake is is critical to to the whole economic pie. And uh, getting this situation resolved in Lake Georgia, Supervisor Dickinson, I, I we're getting close to uh, a new treatment facility for. Uh, for, for the lake, uh, depends on how fast you are. It's scheduled. Uh, they're hoping to start construction twenty twenty. It's a long process. They're uh, working on the uh, plans right now. The initial plans. There's a lot of there's a lot of going on. Part of the problem is uh, that they need to maintain the plant, present plant. At the same time, they're building a new one, so it's it's pretty involved. Uh, they've done a really great job. It's fascinating if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff. Uh, with the new stuff they add and how they keep the old thing going until at the end they can they reutilize several of the buildings. 
Yes, where, where's the funding going to come? I know the state was going to kick in like four million. Well, it's one of those funding things. The state put up four point two five million out of. At that point, it was a third of the seventeen whatever they thought it was going to be. It's now up to twenty one million. So it was a third of it, but you had to do, you had to do the plans, you had to get the approval, you had to do the construction, and you had to build it, and then and only then could you apply for that four point two five million. After you built it. After you built it, it's been certified. Then and only then can you apply. So, so it was kind of a slap in the face kind of grant. But then they got another little grant, and then they got some more money, and uh, they're up about seven million. They've got enough to cover the engineering costs. And what usually happens with the state is if they fund your engineering costs, they'll fund the rest of it. The issue is how much they fund. Some of them are 50 50 matches. Those are, those are tough. They get approved to map them, right? Right. Because a lot of people weren't flying. Yeah. Because they were 50 50. And the small localities can't afford the 50% of some of these big ticket. So now I think they've made them 70 25 or even 80 20 now. Yeah, they're, they're they up a little. They weren't getting any takers. Uh, a little more. EFC or whatever. There, there, there are two things going on here there's 998 people in the village. <coughs> For his $20 million plan. Well, that's a misnomer. The town sewer district, the Caldwell Sewer District, in the town of Lake George, outside the village, is the same size as the village treatment. <coughs> so basically, we pay 50 50 for the bill. We put in 50% of the sewage, we pay 50 cents of 50 of the cost. So it's a town village project, but the village owns it, so that they're the ones that get all the Supervisor Connor. Yeah, uh, Mike, have we filed the AUD yet with the state? Is, uh, or when will that be filed? The uh, uh, state, that's been filed. That's been filed, good. So you can, we can get that online, yeah, the AUD. Be, yeah. And then, um, and if anybody wants, I mean, just give me a holler, I will email And the, um, I just want to refresh my memory here. So the, uh, the borrowings uh, for the, um, projects that we did the court and colleges in this this year's budget it's part of yeah. that premium payment is part of this year's budget and um, and Frank what 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 did we uh, put in uh, this year's budget as an expected growth of our sales tax what rate expected growth uh, it was slow it was we're, we're under under uh, you know we didn't put it we added 800 826 thousand to the budget so half of that goes back to the towns, approximately, and the four hundred thousand stays with the county. So, uh, you know, we didn't really put any. We put more money in the budget. Just wonder when uh, you might uh, be able to get out to us, uh, or I don't know how that affects the um, model we have for the five-year projection. But I, I'd like to see what that those new those numbers that we have now, how what that looks like on the five-year projection. Right. I mean, I understand there are assumptions that are made there, so we're not changing the assumptions, but the whole numbers may change. Well, the, you know, I mean, we're using the fund balance to pay to pay the debt costs, but you know, unless we break the tax cap, we can't you can't raise enough money all at once to uh, accommodate it. It's just not possible. Not do everything else unless we do some drastic changes, and I really don't see that happening. Either. Supervisor Sokol. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have two items that are, are relatively new. It would be interesting to see what happens with them. Is, uh, Michael, you had uh, mentioned, and I, I made a report on it at the, at the board meeting, but the new bonds that you're going to be getting into. Um, Our bond rating is increasing. Okay. We are not, unless this board decides to go out for our money, we're not getting into bonds. Okay. I thought you were changing up once we. Uh, Done we, can't, we can't do anything with the one, the first bond, the $8 million that we did the first time because we bonded it over two years to try to spread the payments out. We can refinance that, I think, maybe in about another three or four years, but I doubt that it's going to be beneficial to the other one is uh, uh, self insurance, too. It's brand new to us. We'll have to see, you know, we're going to get as it flows, but right. we could have a banner year. Possible. Um, 
yeah that, so we still have to find funding for the million dollar a year payment for the courthouse we still have to find funding for the three hundred and twenty five thousand a year and stuff correct well we've accommodated some of it you know some of it's been incorporated in the budget but as i say you can't do it all at once right. not, not in the current uh, circumstances okay and then my other point though back to lake george was um, if there's a shortfall in funding and i know there's specific guidelines to the uh, occupancy tax money but um, i would probably be supportive in seeing that we were even going to increase our occupancy tax revenue not our percentage but our revenue once we hook up with a airbnb if it was if it fell within the legal parameters i'd like to see us uh, fund help Lake George Lake and uh, the town and the village help fund that sewage treatment plant, the water treatment plant. And, uh, and in my mind, uh, I think we have enough in that $4 million occupancy tax, which will grow even bigger once we get Airbnb. I think we, there's some play in there to help, to, as long as the law allows us <coughs> to help fund that. That's what I'm, I, I know we've had a, a short discussion on that before. But I think it makes sense because Lake George is just so vital to this whole county. So I'm throwing that out there. We may be, you know, maybe for a discussion later. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I just um, like to get back uh, to the budget a little bit here and the specific numbers that is. So if you exclude the one time revenue of um, the Siemens settlement, then our change year over year was how much? Our positive change would be how much? About 800, 700,000, something like that. And I think the point that Chairman I think Thomas was making was that if we're dropping seven or eight hundred thousand dollars to the fund balance, but we're using one point eight million dollars out of the fund balance, that that's the that's, that represents the gap, is what I think you were saying. Was that would represent the gap of where we are in terms of the in terms of the funding stream? It looks good this year because we had that one-time shot, but it's not. Um, we're still using from the fund balance a little bit more than what we're dropping to the fund balance. I guess is the way I would say it, or maybe it's it's not quite dollar for dollar. Is my point? And, yeah. and I I like to see whatever you use out of your fund balance is what you're dropping to your fund balance so that you're not using your savings to support your operating condition. That's the point. Well, that's one of the reasons why that fund balance has been able to go up a little bit is because of these one-time things that we've had in the last five years and prudent projections on the sales tax. A couple of years, it was 0%. Right. It makes more money. So basically what has happened over the last few years is we've actually been able to put more into it than we've been taking out. But that's a lot because of these one-time things that have come along. You can't depend on those. Those kind of costs not so much. So. I guess I'm uh, in search of ideas to uh, re reduce maybe, our costs. I guess. Maybe a quick question for, for Dennis again in terms of the, uh, the willingness or the temperature of uh, you mentioned 998 users, village versus town. Uh, you have uh, uh, properties in the village of Lake George that are significant properties in terms of valuation. Uh, is, is, is that how people are billed is, is for sewer? Is, is it related to valuation at all? There, there uh, is a uh, term in the equation uh, that the town has that's uh, relative to set value, but generally speaking, no, it's, it's user use. That's what it goes on. So if you're in the district and you're using, you pay, you pay for operation, you pay for maintenance, and you pay for capital projects. So, okay. You sometimes are different though. The ad valorem part, mm -hmm. the capital expenditures goes on your assessment, and then you know how much you use.
Any other uh, comments to uh, assist uh, 2017? Yes, Mr. Well, I, I just, I guess history lesson, you don't, you know, look at history sometimes you repeat it. In 2005, the county had almost $25 million in its surplus. By 2009, it was down to $3 million. I mean, we borrowed money, okay? That's not a very long period of time to lose almost $20 million. I'm just bringing that up just Obviously, it was a perfect storm type scenario where the economy would collapse and a lot of other things happened. But it only took a few years to lose $20 million in surplus. All right. But, you know, there was, uh, there was a lot of money used to balance the budget at that time. It was a lot more than $1.8. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. And I'm not, and I've been like, you know, I'm very proud of what this board has done and what, and what Frank has been able to do with our budgets and everything else. But firm believer in listening to the past to make sure you don't repeat those mistakes. And that was a that was a huge problem. Right. <clears throat> well there will be a tax increase. I mean that, that money was spent on the election, that's what it was. Because I took over when we had no money. Yeah. And we we had three million when I took over and when I left Budget Officer we had fourteen million. Yeah. But that was that was the prayer prayer of people spending it on their own elections in two thousand six. I'm not going to comment on that. Well, I know, because I, I got a real lesson in county budgeting when uh, we were 500000 in a hole just from the Sheriff's Department over budgeting uh, revenue for uh, boarding in prisoners, which I've got to ask Bud if we picked up any of those from Greene County, because <laughs> they're, they're battling right now. But Mr. Chairman. Yeah, well, I mean, the challenge is has unchanged if we if you get two percent on your sales tax okay. if uh, that's on 25 million call that half a million bucks and then if you have one percent on your property tax uh, you know you're, you're talking uh, another four hundred thousand or so so or thereabouts so you've got um, assuming you do that um, and assuming you get the two percent so you got nine hundred thousand dollars but if uh, every 1% increase in payroll right. annually is um, probably takes all of that. Yep. Probably takes all of that, and that's before you talk about all of the rest of the budget, all of the rest of the budget. So and that's 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 the point. So it, even if we got the 2% on the sales tax, it's not that we 2% doesn't grow us out of it. A 2% basically holds us where we are presently. And I don't know that we can expect that. I mean, we can hope, but I don't know that we're going to do more than 2% of the sales tax. Yeah. 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 Well, short of any savings, you know, like you say, we got eight hundred, maybe $900,000 to uh, apply to next year's budget to stay the same. Anything over that, you know, we're, uh, we're either going to break the tax cap or we're going to use more fund balance to make it happen. There's no other way to... I'd like to comment uh, just briefly on Doug's suggestion. I certainly appreciate it, uh, Doug. Uh, but as chair of the OCTAX committee, we have um, some serious commitments on our occupancy tax. Uh, as you know, we're trying to reorganize and do some uh, more things that the business people are interested in. Uh, there's not that much money there to go around. You throw around some big numbers, but when you sit down and look at your obligations for occupancy tax and start spreading them out into the future five years, you're in trouble and big hurt. Uh, we have some serious things that we need to deal with, uh, not the least of which is the uh, Civic Center. Uh, we have some obligations to them two or three years out. Uh, my hope is eventually that they will be able to get stabilized at some number much less than the 250 that we're 250,000 that we're doing now. We we can't we can't continue to do that. Uh, it's just not there. So we're really hoping that when they settle out, there'll be a more reasonable number that we can handle because they're definitely an asset. And there are other obligations that that we have out there. They, they add up over time. Not the least of which is, you know, you have a tourism department, they have employees. 
we have employees that have been collecting on that for over 30 years, over 40 years. So it's, it's a, a, a burden that's never ending. Every time you hire an employee in the tourism department, they're a burden forever. So we have to make sure that we keep all that in mind and, and uh, um, it's, it's an obligation that you really have to keep an eye on. You can get away from it quick. Supervisor Leggett. Germ. Yeah, um, it's a good point, Claudia. Uh, also, I would put on in, in the category, it would be, it, it be interesting to hear from um, our uh, uh, Jaeger Flynn <coughs> at some point here soon. <coughs> I mean, we were looking at, we went through a period of 10 to 20 percent increase in annual health care costs. Just to give you some idea, we're like, what, 13 million, 12 million, I mean, a huge, it's a huge number on health care. So, now, while that won't represent necessarily represent savings, uh, it, if ten or eleven, what's that? It's about ten or eleven. Now. Ten or eleven. Mm -hmm. So, if you, if our self insurance can keep us in the two to three percent range, uh, four percent range, as opposed to ten percent, while that at least uh, mitigates, it doesn't eliminate, but it mitigates that amount of financial pressure that we were incurring each and every year. It was just it, that along with uh, some of these other costs were just, it was really eroded our, our um, Chairman, available cash. I, I, I could speak to that if I may. I, I've spoken with Jaeger and Flynn in the past couple of days regarding uh, that very thing, projections on our health insurance going forward. Uh, basically, we have four months of uh, claim data. It's very immature at this point. Uh, it's difficult for them to project uh, where we're going in 2018, uh, let alone after 2018. We're going to need to get some more data in there to, uh, to get a better handle on that. However, some of the industry uh, standards that uh, would be used to project into future years, and you won't see many of these standards make a claim for you know, two years out or three years out, but in terms of one year out, uh, professional entities are projecting, you know, some of the figures we've seen are five and a half percent all the way up to seven and a half percent or higher. So uh, that's where the market as a whole is moving. Uh, whether we can do better with our experience uh, with our members, uh, that remains to be seen. And Jaeger and Flynn does have some ideas that we're pursuing uh, to, uh, in terms of wellness programs. Uh, proactive things that we can do with our members to uh, hopefully keep those costs down. But again, that's a work in progress and we need more uh, claim data. Supervisor Sokol. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, and this has been brought up in years prior and, and uh, Supervisor Garrity, you may not like me for this, but Countryside has, uh, has been on the docket a few times and, and quite honestly, the census right now is around 35 people. Uh, you know, I think that runs us in neighborhood of $600,000, $650,000 a year. So it's 
just food for thought if we're going to get really, really tough. Maybe one of the things we have to look at. Well, it's, you know, uh, something to think about. It's always, you know, kind of the same question at a budget meeting is how can we save dollars? But there will be a uh, future budget meeting, so but, uh, we do need to conserve as much as we can. Do we have any indication on the state's growth rate, Tom? Yeah, that's going to, I think, around 2%. It's uh, the, I know the school budget, the, head, the Luzerne school budget was uh, one their, their cap was 1.97. So I would assume it's going to be about the same. That's been a, uh, that's been problematic in the past too. You know, yep. Especially when it gets so low that it's, you know, not reflective of just the cost of goods and services <coughs> and personnel. Well, last year we went 2.9% uh, uh, percent tax increase. But we used all of our carryover to do that too, so uh, we're not going to have. It's going to be about what the cap is. Yes. As, as much as you know, we're able to buy CDs now with the interest rates. I don't know if you have looked at your credit card; they've all gone up. And uh, you know, I I talked to the bank the other day, and all the rates are going up on everything. And uh, even with our bond rating, you know. I expect that we'll pay a higher bond cost going forward on this other eight million, or has that already been? No, we're 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 locked in with the rates that we got when we bought the single bonds. No, I mean the the second eight. You're locked in on both. Yeah. Okay. So the second one was actually a fourteen point something million dollar bond because it's the end step and the second half of the portion. So we're locked in on that. But if you check your credit card statements, all your rates have gone up. Home equities. Well, just the good thing on that is that now, believe it or not, CDs are actually, I could go out and get some CDs with some yeah, of our We did too. We bought that, some. So. That, but we'll, given, I mean, it isn't huge amounts of money like it used to be, but we're looking into that and we'll, we'll get some money there. Um, rather, and the banks are backing off a little bit on their fees, so we'll be able to save a little bit on one end and make a little bit more on the other. Yes. Yeah, I brought this up in the past, and I know we do this to some degree on some of the federal and state grant monies we receive, but I also see dollars going through for different grants. Uh, it might be worthwhile to have uh, someone come in and take a look at uh, the amount of federal and state money we move through here and the appropriateness of applying an indirect cost allocation rate against all of those grants because it is costing us money. I mean, yes, the grants are going out and doing good. I'm not saying that, that they're not doing that, but all of those programs do uh, entertain uh, in, uh, 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 understand there's, there's a cost of doing business. We have our building, our light, and our heat, etc., and they do allow for certain indirect cost allocations to be incorporated into the administration of those grants. And it might be worthwhile to have, and I'm sure there are companies that do this that could come in and take a look at uh, that to determine whether we're maximizing on the indirect cost allocation. You could, be, I mean, for example, if three percent, three three percent, or four percent against the tens of millions of dollars, a big number. Right. This is an example. Yeah. Uh, if there's nothing else, we'll move on to uh, part five, I guess, of the uh, agenda. And this was a, a referral from the Health, Human, and Social Services Committee. Uh, there was a, a motion made and uh, was carried by unanimous vote uh, for the county to assume uh, all costs related to the Office for the Aging uh, Meal Sites. Uh, there's, there's
There's some towns that provide uh, either direct or indirect contributions to the meal sites, and uh, the mo uh, my understanding of that meeting was it wasn't fair, and uh, the county should pay for all of it. So uh, currently, at this point, uh, OFA is looking at that and uh, requesting more information from the towns uh, because we don't really have a solid number. I know uh, Supervisor Loeb put together a sheet there, but I don't think he captured <coughs> captured all of uh, the expenses. So I guess until we get a solid number, so we know what we're talking about, it's, it's kind of set there. Going through old files, found something from 2000 where the office where the agent was to put in a meal site in our new town hall with the idea of um, yearly rent being about $3,000 in the year. The town just do spend a lot of money on the senior nutri nutrition program. There's uh, about 638000 in, in county dollars, and then there's another 300000 or 400000 in uh, grant, you know, different uh, federal and state programs. So it's about, I think it's around $1.3 million total. It's a million, uh, 25761 is our gross, uh, and, and as the uh, uh, chairman said, uh, the, the county portion of that is 638000 which is about 62%. So the county match, uh, or if you will, is already much higher than most counties around the state. Just a point of information. Yes? Yeah, I was here when that was done, and Budget Officer Garrity at the time yep. um, uh, asked the question, he, it wasn't like an edict from on high, he asked the question, you know, uh, of certain municipalities, I guess you could say, you know, is, is there any way you can help with this? And of course, I'll speak for both, we said, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to, we're happy to have a nutritional site and we're participating. If the county wants to take over of those costs, uh, good. Um, I'm certainly not going to fight that, but um, that was a commitment we made back then and we're good to good for our commitment yeah so, yes mr. Stroll. yeah it, it, the pictures you know not real clear because if you're taking a look at what the communities are doing to assist directly assist their senior group and what they expand and who benefits from that that probably isn't going to be in any easy put together picture I mean, Queensbury, for example, directly, not indirect, direct costs are $160,000 to facilities for seniors that are enjoyed by seniors in the whole region, not just Queensbury. And we provide those benefits for those, uh, you know, that come to Queensbury activities, enjoy Queensbury programs, because Queensbury bears the cost. That's fine. I'm not asking for anything. It's just the way we've done it. But, I mean, if you're going to look at the whole picture, it's not as clear as a simple thing. It's, it's a book. Yes. I'm not Claudia. on the committee, but I, I think that just hearing what we're hearing from town supervisors that aren't asking for money, that aren't asking the county to take these on, I, I don't see why we should, given the conversation we just had about our budget and really needing to be careful about what we're spending. Right. Well, that's why I brought that's why I got referred to this committee is because, uh, you know, it's an additional expense that... Can that go the same way the Cedars meal site discussion went? Yeah. Let's bring the seniors back for more discussion. I yeah. suppose this committee could do that. I, just, I don't see why they couldn't. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just on a, on a couple of other matters. One, um, 
this year we um, each year in January there's I don't know a dozen or so resolutions that would and this happens at the town level also that fall into the organizational meeting and um, tend to be rudimentary but aren't always especially with new supervisors and things like that that are unaware of some of these things and so questions get raised and so this year we changed things a little bit in that prior to the board meeting uh, we had a finance meeting and we shipped all the re resolutions off to the finance meeting so that committee could act on it um, and, and decide what they wanted tabled or whatever uh, but I think this year and going forward I think that when uh, this committee uh, deals with the budget it should deal with those resolutions uh, in committee uh, and so that there's a committee action uh, relative to those within the budget and there's any, any of a number I'm going to say a dozen there could be one or two more I, I, I don't know uh, and then um, and so that would be done in a more timely fashion it would be done in advance well in advance of our organizational meeting and our budget review and that way when we approve the budget we're also uh, even though we're approving the funding for all of these items we've also taken a look at each individual individual resolution and the funding we're giving these organizations and build that into our um, process uh, so that uh, uh, we don't find ourselves in January having a dozen resolutions put on the agenda which maybe all of us here in the room now are familiar with and comfortable with but there may be uh, supervisors that are not and I think it just make for um, a smoother process and I would say also that during that same period the uh, OCTAX committee whatever's going to be done with OCTAX should also uh, be uh, made ready as well so that the supervisors when they're voting on the budget know what they're voting on on the major funding programs going across the board so you know for example if uh, we're voting on the budget that includes as an example funding for Eastfield or funding for something in Bolton the other supervisor knows uh, what's in there relative to other other expenditures and all that should be as concurrent as possible as, as I guess they may have to be separate pieces of legislation I'm not sure about that or whether it can all be incorporated into a budget resolution but it should all be done simultaneously otherwise what ends up we have had years where uh, through no fault of anyone it's just uh, where some of those major things have, have lingered into January and February and March of the following year and um, and, it, and it's created some issues uh, which you can well understand especially if, if somebody feels they're not getting what they um, what their community should be getting so all of that should be kind of try we should try to reconcile that all at the same time yep. so that's like, agreeable with you I think yeah, like that early October I, that's the way I would do it and then if the if the um, then when the resolutions themselves uh, we can actually act on them when we act on the budget uh, even though the funding might not take place till the following year but even if it's determined that no these resolutions have to wait until January at least we, they've been run through committee right. sounds good to me motion to adjourn sure moved by uh Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Dick Dickerson. <laughs>